to another episode of Sweeney's Plant Rant. Actually, Sweeney May's Plant Rant. I decided to create this channel because I've been spending so much time with my plants and I love creating content. So I said, I thought to myself, how about we use this time that we take with, our, with, with the plants to actually create content that I could put out on YouTube that other people can use because I myself ha have consumed um, a lot of content about plants. I want to say at least 25 hours of my life was spent on just watching YouTube videos about plants. Um, I would watch it wh while I'm getting ready. I would watch it uh, or listen to it while I'm driving. Um, would watch it while I'm cleaning the house. So I thought, let me contribute to the world of plants by also sharing my experiences. I am a fairly new plant mom and uh, just like many of us, I jumped on the plant mom bandwagon when the quarantine started in 2020. So I, I think I bought my first plant maybe in May or June. So today we're going to talk about my, one of my favorite plants, which is a spotted begonia. Look how beautiful that is. It's like a dark olive green leaf with, it looks white on video, but it's silver. If you really look close, it's silver dots. I don't know if it'll focus. Um, <laughs> but these are spotted begonia is what they're casually known for. Or more specifically, they are begonia maculata. Um, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but begonia maculata. I'll spell it out and they're here. And I first found this in a nursery and I just thought to myself, and I'm sorry, there's a plane. My plane is coming to pick me up. No, I'm just kidding. I live pretty close to an airport, so that happens. So anyway, um, this, I found this in a nursery and I just thought, oh my God, it's a beautiful plant. And at that time, this would have been my fifth plant that I owned. And I thought, oh, how cool would it be to start um owning like exotic plants so to say so i bought it and it was 26 dollars, and it did not look like this it was actually fuller let me tell you the story and there's a lot to be learned in this story okay so this plant was a lot fuller like three times fuller but um at some point i realized there were some sprouts like this let's see if i can show you like this little guy right here there's some sprouts, when it was fuller, sprouts like that remained just sprouts for like at least a month. And it was, and it was kind of bothering me. And I kind of had it right here next to the window, maybe about 10 feet away from the window. And at that time, I was still a newbie, so I wasn't reading up on the plants that I bought. So I didn't really know how to take care of it. All I knew was I'm, I'm going to just check to see if, it, if the soil is still wet if it's still wet don't water it um and then i would spray all my plants with water because i read that misting your plants um, increases humidity and but wrong mistake number one is that uh, begonia maculata's leaves they don't like to be um sprayed with water they like to remain dry so that was mistake number one for me um, mistake number two is that I did not know how important it was to prune them in order for it to um, encourage new growth. And so now that I know, let me show you an example. Um, let me show you an example. If you see this baby leaf right here, I'm going to show you the backside. And I put a stake because then it's kind of just falling all over the place. If you see in the back, there used to be a leaf that went like about this long right here, a stem and then a leaf. And when I learned about how important it was to prune these plants so that they would grow bushier, I just started like, uh, I, I closed my, first of all, it was a great leaf and I didn't feel good about cutting it because I've never really pruned this plant. So I closed my eyes and just click, I just cut it with 
sterilized um, scissors, clean scissors, because every time you prune your plants, you want to make sure that your scissors are clean or that you wash it with um, dish soap or something with antibacterial because if your scissors are dirty, it, can, it, it could infect your plant. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, right? <laughs> and so anyway, if you look at this baby leaf right here, there used to be a leaf that grew about this way. And so I decided to cut it and now there's a baby leaf growing and here's another one next to it. I don't know if you can see that little, little bud right there. And then there's another one on the other side right there, getting ready to come out. Um, and there was actually another leaf next to it, but it was so close to this leaf that it eventually fell off. I think sometimes when your plants are trying to grow and sprout new leaves, some make it, well, most make it and some don't. And so anyway, that's a prime example of why you need not be afraid of pruning your begonia maculata because the more you prune, um, sorry, somebody's texting me. Maybe I should put it in silence. Silence, please. Okay. <laughs> um, the more you prune it, the more you're encouraging it to sprout new leaves where you've cut it. So if you're interested in trying it out and you don't know exactly where to cut, if let's say you want to prune this right here, you just cut right about here or a little bit closer to the stem, but not all the way to that little node. Um, and then you'll see that leaves will start growing within like not even two weeks i promise you that so that was mistake number two not knowing how to prune mistake number three is that i did not let it dry out enough before watering it again and it caused root rot so because there were sprouts that wasn't quite growing i thought to myself and this, at this time, I've already been watching videos about plants and about this plant in particular. And um, I started learning more about root rot and how to look for it and how to determine and how to just diagnose your plant. So I saw this video and I forgot his name. I would totally give him credit, but maybe I'll put it somewhere here. But there's a, this doctor, an actual like human doctor <laughs> that, uh, that, explained that root rot should be the first instinct that you should have every time there's something wrong with your plant so if you're diagnosing your plant they say oh there's something wrong it must be root rot that's how he said it and that's how i learned to like oh, it must be root rot and it doesn't it's not that difficult to um diagnose or look and see if you have root rot I would, I would lift the soil up for you right now, but I'm not prepared to do that. What I did was just uh, remove it out of the pot, and then I started kind of um, loosening up the soil to see what the roots are. And I, if when I edit this video, I'll add the photos I have. I believe I took some Instagram videos when I was cleaning its roots. But you know it's root rot when the roots are black and just look like they're fungus and when you pull them they just come off so easily and they tear off easily because a healthy root is super strong and if you guys watch my last video about the ivs that i re repotted you'll see roots are not supposed to be black they're supposed to be like fleshy white color and they're supposed to be nice and healthy and plump so then if you inspect your plant and the roots are black first of all it could be soil yes but honestly, um, healthy, I'm trying to look to see if I can show some example. Healthy roots will, uh, will, will still show as white through that soil. Okay, here's an example. So if you guys see the rooting right there, even though it's in soil and you'd think maybe the roots will be black anyway, you see how it's still like fleshy color? Like that is a healthy root. Okay, now <laughs> I can't put it back exactly how it was, and then it's probably angry at me right now. I'm sorry. I really do talk to my plants. Okay, you'll be okay. We have to show them so that they know how to take care of plants. Okay, totally crazy plant mom moment there. <sighs> okay. So that's how you know that um, the roots are healthy because there's still that like 
light colored, really healthy looking roots. If that just made sense. Um, so anyhow, um, that was mistake number three is that I didn't really know how to water it. And now that I do, I actually eventually bought a, a moisture meter that will help me determine. I kind of got sick. I have about 20 ish plants and I kind of got sick of going around the house and sticking my finger in there to see if it's still wet so I thought to myself okay this little thing is only $12 on Amazon um, and what you do is you stick it in there and then you want to stick it um, closer to the perimeter of the pot because what you want to avoid is puncturing the roots even though maybe you can't help it but try your best to, to to kind of um, estimate the best portions to stick it in where you're not ruining any root. So this one I just watered a couple of days ago and it shows you that it's still moist. So, and I just stick it my, about, I stick it in about two inches deep. Okay, that sounds really, anyway, I'm talking about moisture meter. Um, <laughs> so anyway, this plant used to be really, really bushy, like I said, but it had root rot and then I had to clean it out. So when you find a root rot um, in any plants, what you have to do is just try your best to remove all the soil so you can wash it. Um, you can wash it and then clean it with antibacterial soap. A dish soap will do or a hand soap will do because what you're doing is cleaning out the bacteria that's causing the, uh, the root to rot and uh you wash it off like you're giving it a good shampoo like imagine this was and the roots will start to kind of feel like this if they were um sort of in the rotting stage because you know our hair is very um well most hairs i don't know about you guys but my hair is kind of soft and smooth and when the roots kind of feel this way it's kind of rotting because the roots should feel thick and a little coarse and with texture you know what i mean so when you start doing this to the roots and then it just falls off like hair those roots are rotting so don't worry about it it's gone it's dead anyway and the more you keep it the more it'll crawl up to your other healthier roots and infect the entire plant so what you're going to do is take um take a, a back to, an antibacterial soap and wash it shampoo the roots and remove all the soil and just really take your time and if the roots are sort of tangled you can use a kebab stick or a chopstick to kind of just comb through the roots like it took me almost an hour to clean out the roots on this, this spotted begonia So I had to rescue another plant from root rot and you might be asking, how did you know it was root rot? I didn't really know. I just had a suspicion because like it had a leaf like that and I thought it was just old and probably ready to fall off. So you know what? I'm just going to check the roots and see. And it was my fault because I repotted this like a month ago, but I didn't inspect for root rot. I didn't know how to. I didn't know what it looked like. So I had to watch a lot of videos and now I know what to look for. So when I was done, I was able to to um to divide the plants in a few different, you know, like sections. So this was one of them and this little growth is new, okay? Um and this was another one and I've already pruned it so there's like only two leaves. And then I it, I had another one on like a 4 inch pot but I gifted it to someone already and it, it's already healthy and it's already growing new leaf so um moral of the story is don't be like me because when I buy furniture from Ikea or something that I have to put it together I don't read the manuals most of the time like 90% of the time I fare well but with plants it's different so begonia maculata is a tropical plant that is originally from Brazil and they love humidity so if you, as you can you guys can see behind me i have a great humidifier i actually got it from shout out to everlasting um if you guys go to my uh instagram or i'll actually put the link here i get 20 percent. Oh, well you get 20 percent off of you buy through my link and i love this because it's like heavy duty and it can take like 1.6 uh, gallons of water which is great because i used to have a smaller humidifier and that thing would only last for maybe two hours and this one could last i haven't tested it but i've had it 
I've had this humidifier run for at least three hours at one time and it didn't even finish half the water. So I love that because it's durable, heavy duty and strong and it's powerful you guys. And it has a little, um, a little drawer underneath if you want to put essential oils. So I love that because other humidifiers, you actually drop the essential oil in the tank itself and that could really like mess up the humidifier so i love that anyway back to these angel wings begonia maquilada okay so when i planted this this stem right here was just a little sprout from another um another one of the stems it didn't have a leaf it didn't have anything and i didn't expect it to actually grow any leaf but it grew one leaf and then it fell off and so i was like oh my god did i did I not clean the root rot well? Did I overwater again? So I, so I just made sure that I didn't water it for a while until the soil was super dry based on my mo moisture meter. So that leaf fell off. And then guess what? Within one week, two new leaves um, started to grow from that one leaf. And then after that, another just one week. And then these other two grew out. I came off grew out of that stem and so moral of the story is sometimes you have to cut off a leaf to make room for more leaves yes get it same in life okay so anyhow I keep looking over here but I need to look like right there <laughs> so anyhow that is the things I've learned about my begonia maculata or your spotted begonia or your angel wings begonia it's really known um, it really has a lot of nicknames. It's just beautiful, you guys. Um, and let me show you this other one because I feel like this one is struggling a little bit and I'm not sure why. Actually, this plant right here, after I cleaned the root rot, I actually um, I, I actually put it in a in a vase with with like spring uh, you no know, distilled water because the roots weren't really long enough and I thought that putting it in water and allowing the roots to grow more by by um, propagating it through water would help. So once the roots grew like at least two inches, I repotted it here. And this originally had four leaves, but like I told you, I decided to prune them recently. And so as you can tell, there's this leaf. Um, there's one down here too. There's, uh, let's see, there's... There's a little baby leaf right here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a baby leaf that's kind of hanging and I'm afraid it's probably going to fall. I'm pretty sure it's going to fall because it's hanging by a thread and then the stem, the, the little thread that it's hanging from is a little brown. So like I said, sometimes some leaves don't make it. However, there's a little bud ready to bloom right there into a new leaf. And then you have another one right here ready to bloom a new leaf and another one down there ready to bloom a new leaf. So when you want to see your plants happy, healthy, and successful, you just have to be patient. And this is why I love being a plant mom and I thought I never would be a plant mom. But I love being a plant mom because it brings me so much excitement to see sprouts like, yes, I did something right. My plant is happy because you know what? They can't talk to you. I mean, the pet, if you have pets, dogs or cats, they can't talk to you either, but at least they can react verbally or just at the moment, right? Your plants take a minute to react to the things that you do. So if you fertilize it, you won't really see the results of it for an, a week or two. If you're killing it, you don't really know you're killing it until it's too late. So, and sometimes you can save plants. Which, by the way, you can see this plant back here. It's dying, but I'm saving it. It's my one of my prayer plants, and I left it in the sun accidentally when I left for the weekend. Anyway, um, that's for another video because this one is already like 20 minutes long. So that's what I can share with you guys about begonia maculatas. So don't be afraid of them. They're pretty easy it, once you get used to just how to pay attention to how wet the soil is if it you know is it ready to be watered um some plant moms actually prefer to wait all the way until the plants kind of 
wither just a little bit for them to water it because that is much safer for more, most plants to for for the plant owner to use that determination that it needs water when it starts to weep a little bit and that's when they water it for me i'm a, i'm i'm a little bit paranoid and and ocd with the watering every day i check the plants um because they all have a different watering schedule and so every day i just take a moment to check them like why not what else am i gonna do you know i work from home i need a break and i'll get up and just check on the plants are they still alive uh, uh are they dying <laughs> do they need a little attention so anywho these are my spotted begonias and i'm very very excited and also they're very easy to propagate if you just cut it right underneath a node and a node is like like where two stems meet cut it right underneath the no node and stick it in the water oh i made a mess <laughs> stick it in the water or stick it in soil and it will grow for you so i'm hoping that in about a month this is going to be super bushy i'm excited um, and I'll come back and report back and that's it you guys. Thank you so much for listening to my plant rant because I Stay true to that. I really do rant about my plants and thank you guys if you if you enjoy this video And you know of someone that could use this video share it Don't forget to like it or comment down below if I've missed anything. I'm not claiming to be an expert i'm just sharing with you my own experiences and the things i've learned um and so if i missed anything about these plans comment down below um like and subscribe and i'll keep coming back every week with new content about sweeney may's plant rants bye guys